The invention of fire was one of the biggest turning points in human history. The ability to cook led to bigger brains, which gave us the ability to use that fire to make weapons and structures and heat our homes. It was also the first use of biomass as a fuel source, which makes a biomass plant operator the oldest profession in the world. Actually, no, that's prostitutes. What I'm saying is biomass is the prostitution of renewable energy. This video is the second in a three-part series on renewable energy. In the first video, which I will link right here, I talk about hydropower and geothermal. And if you're watching this in the future, I'll put the third video link up here too. So let's talk biomass. Biomass involves burning or extracting energy from biological sources like plant matter, organic waste, and yes, wood. And while burning trees doesn't sound that green, it is considered carbon neutral because the carbon in that plant matter was already a part of the carbon cycle. Whereas if you dig fossil fuels out of the ground, that was carbon that was sequestered away for millions of years, now being reintroduced into the atmosphere. Now there are a lot of different types of biomass from incinerators that burn the material to biofuel for transportation to chemical processes that create usable methane and they vary widely in their efficiency and sustainability. For example, plants that incinerate leftover plant matter from agriculture or lumber industries are just using waste material that would have been thrown away anyway. But creating biofuel from corn and sugarcane crops requires a lot of land and produces a lot of carbon emissions. One good thing about biomass is it's local. All of the material can be harvested from the local area and it doesn't require a lot of transportation to get it from one place to another. And just like coal, it's flexible. If you need more power, just throw some more biomass in there. And there's always more biomass to use. I don't want to brag, but uh, we're pretty good at producing waste. And while it's not the greenest energy source, it is a plentiful fuel that provides baseload power for local communities. And any communities, unlike hydro and geothermal, which are location specific, everybody has biomass that they can use. In fact, it kind of self-scales because the bigger a community is, the more waste they're gonna produce and then the more energy that we can get from that waste. Just creating a nice little resources loop. If you live by the ocean, you're more than familiar with the rhythmic pattern of waves crashing on the beach over and over again, day and night. There's a lot of wave energy out there, but wave energy is kind of the weak sauce of renewable energy. It's weak sauce because, well, we're still trying to figure it out. Much like hydroelectric energy, wave energy seems to have a lot of potential especially for coastal cities, which some of the biggest cities in the world are coastal cities. So the idea is that the surface of the ocean is constantly bobbing and shifting all the time, so how can we use that energy to produce renewable electricity? I mean, it seems like a great idea. 71% of the planet is covered by this constantly moving and oscillating ocean. Harnessing that energy just seems like a no-brainer, except nobody's really figured it out. There have been a lot of ideas that have been tested, but none of them have actually produced enough to implement on a large scale. In fact, the most efficient wave energy generators that we have right now would require 25 kilometers of coastline to produce one gigawatt of electricity. And estimates have placed the total worldwide potential for wave energy at our current technologies at only two terawatt hours per year. Every sentence that comes out of my mouth about wave energy is more depressing than the last one. So who knows, maybe some genius will come up with a good way to capture wave energy, but for now, <laughs> Staying in the ocean, a much better solution is tidal energy. Tide goes in, tide goes out. Never miscommunication. You can't explain that. No, sir, you can't. Not without a third grade understanding of the solar system. Whatever magic causes the tides to roll in and out, tidal energy captures that energy and creates electricity out of it. And tidal energy is not baseload energy. It is considered intermittent. Even though it does go in and out constantly throughout the day, there are periods between the tides where it's not generating any energy. So they call it intermittent, but predictable. Right now, there are two types of tidal energy systems, tidal barrage and tidal stream generators. Tidal barrage systems basically build a dam or bridge over the opening to bays and ports where tides rush in twice a day and capture that energy as it passes through the structure, turning turbines in the process. Tidal stream generators are basically like wind turbines on the seafloor in areas where moving tide will turn the blades. There is, however, a third option that's never really been put into practice but holds a lot of potential called dynamic tidal power. For this, we would build enormous 50 kilometer long dams that stick straight out from a coastline, forcing the oncoming tide to go through the structure and turn turbines. This would work especially well in areas where the tide travels parallel with the coastline, such as Southeast Asia and Northern Europe. 
There are a few projects in the works to test this out, but this would be a massive engineering project. The good thing about tidal power is that it happens every single day, nonstop, and it even works at low speeds. They also have very long lifespans. The first one that was built was in La Rance in France in 1966, and it's still working. The downside is that it's expensive, only works in certain areas, and the worldwide potential is only 700 terawatt hours a year. Again, we consume 21,000 terawatt hours a year, so it's not really going to move the needle. But it can serve as a supplementary energy resource to the places that can use it. Whether that resource is enough to spur investments in those kinds of projects, we'll see. So I got this at a pretty high level explanation. If you have any personal experience working on tidal projects or biomass that you can add to the discussion, I would love to hear more about it in the comments down below. And I've also found as I've been researching this that the estimates of the power generation vary widely. I got all kinds of different numbers. So if you have better sources than I was able to find, again, please share those downstairs. The next video in this series will close out by focusing on the two sexiest renewables, one deservedly so and one very much not, solar and wind. All right, thanks for watching. If this is your first time here, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos because I talk about stuff like this all the time. And if you like those, please subscribe. Special thanks to the Answer Files on Patreon that help support this channel. If you would like to join them and get some special perks like my Patreon-only vlog and behind-the-scenes type stuff, you can join at patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. And as always, this video is sponsored by cankerboy.com. If you get mouth ulcers or canker sores on a regular basis, you can stop them by taking this daily supplement and you can get it at cankerboy.com. You got a two month risk free trial. All right, thanks again for watching. Like and share if you liked it. Now go out there and have an eye opening week and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys, take care.